This is Earl, father of the five-string banjo. Mr. Scruggs, what, what are you doing here? I've come to impart some wisdom that shall change your playing well, forever. Anything, just just tell me. I'll, I'll do it right away. Change your strings. Change my strings. Well, you're right. And I have one other piece of advice that shall change your playing and your life forever. Well, by all means, just name it. I'll do it right away. Change your underwear, son. Dad gum. How long's it been? Okay. Goodness gracious, what would your mama think? Thanks. All right, folks. We're going to change our strings, but first of all, I've got to go take care of some other business. All right, y'all, now that I'm all freshened up, let's talk about changing those banjo strings. Today, we're going to cover several different things that are very useful to learn as you start to play the banjo. We're going to talk about actual changing your strings, removing the old strings. We're going to talk about what kind of strings that we can use to replace our old strings. There's several different types that you can get. We're going to talk about different uh, tools that might make your experience of changing your banjo strings just a little bit easier. And then we'll also talk about stretching your strings once you get them on the banjo. A banjo's hard enough to keep in tune as it is, much less having to deal with brand new strings that are still wanting to stretch on you. So we'll cover all that. Grab your banjo, grab some new strings, and uh, let's dive on in. All right, let's talk about strings. Uh, today we're going to be changing the strings on this uh, Gibson RB250. Um, I've got a couple different types of strings here. I'm going to talk just a little bit about that. Now there's all kinds of different string gauges that you can get for the banjo. Uh, one company that offers perhaps the, uh, the most diversity in the string gauges is a, a company that I really like. These are GHS strings. They make a, like a JD Crow set and I think they make a Sonny Osborne set light, mediums, all different sorts of uh, combinations. Personally, I use a medium gauge. I like to feel a lot of resistance whenever I play. I play pretty hard, um, perhaps too hard sometimes, my wife says. But these, uh, the gauge um, on the particular strings that I use, uh, starting with the, the high D string, is 11, then to 13, a 16, a 26, and then your high fifth string, the high G, is a 10, okay? Um, but like I say, you can try all kinds of different combinations, figure out what you like. Another string that I also like that I, that I use quite often is this Elixir banjo string. Elixir makes a, a banjo string. Um, they make a medium and a light. Uh, once again, I choose the medium with Elixir. I like these strings uh, personally because they do have the coating on there, um, which tends to affect the tone just a little bit, but it, uh, it really increases the life of the string. I mean, I play banjo uh, quite a bit, and I change strings maybe once every six weeks, something like that. I know not near enough, and I don't have any problem with them breaking. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are hardcore traditionalists that will um, perhaps not like to use elixirs on the bluegrass instruments, but I love them. So there's two different kind of strings there that I use quite often. I probably use uh, each of these about the same amount. Okay, another tool that I would like to... Um, introduced to you is this Planet Waves uh, String Changer and Winder. This is one of the coolest little tools that you can get. It's 10 bucks at, uh, at Guitar Center and it's a combination string winder and clipper and uh, you see the winder here. What's cool about it is that if you're a mandolin player it's also got a smaller slot on the end uh, for your smaller uh, peg heads for the mandolin or it has for banjo and guitar your uh, larger peg slots. Then it has a clipper that's built right in. It works really well. It's got a really small head on it, so you can get really close to the uh, to the tuning post there and uh, clip your your strings just as uh, short as you want to. So I recommend that tool. That's a very good investment. I just keep it in my banjo case, use it all the time with all my instruments. So first thing we're going to do is pull off the strings on this banjo. A word to the wise here because. I think most of us have made this mistake at one point or another. Whenever you're stringing an instrument that has a suspended tension bridge, such as a banjo or a mandolin or a fiddle or an archtop guitar perhaps, um, you, you really don't want to change more than one string at a time. Sometimes I'll do two at a time, but if you release too much of that tension off the bridge, the bridge does have a tendency to move on you, to slide one way or the other. And uh, unless you uh, are familiar with setting up banjos, you really don't want your bridge to move. Matter of fact, one thing that I do will take 
I'll take a, um, a Sharpie marker and kind of make a, or a pencil, if you wanna um, be able to get rid of the mark and make just a small mark on the ends of my bridge exactly where the bridge is located so that during the course of changing your strings, if something happens, if you get uh, too much tension taken off of that, your bridge moves, you can always get it back to the original spot and preserve that intonation. Okay, let's pull the strings off here. I'm gonna start with the high G string, the fifth string. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is pull this string off the high uh, G string here. Uh, there's not any particular method to um, changing your strings as far as which string you wanna start with, but I do like to remove a string and then go ahead and replace the string uh, right after you remove it. So the good thing about banjo also is that your uh, gears are generally pretty high geared. And what I mean by that is it doesn't take a lot of turning to move a lot of your strings. So for me, I, I rarely use my, my string winder with, um, with my banjo like I might would with a, a guitar or a mandolin. But we're just gonna make sure that uh, we are turning the string the correct way, okay? We wouldn't wanna turn it the opposite way and, and end up breaking the string. So we just wanna pluck the string Turn it, make sure that the note is going down. And we're gonna go ahead and take all the tension off of it. However, when you do this, I want you to unwind it till the hole in the tuning post there is lined up parallel with the fingerboard, okay? There's a little hole that the string goes through right here. Make sure that it's facing back towards the fingerboard. I'll explain to you why that's important in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the string. Remove it from our tailpiece down here. We can just wrap this string up and get it out of the way. And the other thing that we want to be careful about whenever we're putting our new strings on is that we grab the correct string out of the new package. All of us have probably made the mistake of putting the wrong string at the wrong place. And then when you try to tune it up to pitch, uh, you'll get a surprise. You'll get a, a pop. But here we go, this is the uh, 10 gauge high G string here, okay? I'm gonna pull it out. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, place the um, string around the tailpiece. Now, if you have 100 banjos, you might have 100 different tailpieces, okay? They're all, a lot of them are, have quite a few differences. But regardless, we can figure out how to get the strings on those. This particular one's a fairly standard one. It does have a tailpiece cover that comes up over it that's hinged. So we're just gonna pop that off. I usually end up, this is a fairly new banjo, I usually end up just taking that off because I get tired of, of messing with it. But we're gonna find the little hook at the end of the tailpiece here that corresponds to this high G string. And we're gonna get the looped end of our string looks like this and we're going to place it around this loop on the tailpiece and then you'll see the channel that is on the tailpiece here that the fifth string actually runs through you see it there okay and it'll actually go over the top of the tailpiece and then it'll wrap underneath and go underneath the head of that tailpiece okay then we want to make sure and just get the string in the appropriate bridge slot there. Okay, now we only have one string taken off, so it's not hard to identify which uh, bridge slot we want it in. Okay, now's perhaps the toughest part of replacing your strings, but it's still not that tough. We don't have anything to worry about. But what we're going to do is run the loose end of this string down through this hole in the tuning post there. And if you remember, that's why I told you to try to try to leave the tuning post lined up with the fretboard so that it's easier to just run the string through, as you see here, okay? Now, on most banjos, you should have a little channel guide that sits right before this fifth string tuning peg, okay? It's got a little slot in it, usually just made out of plastic. And you'll want to make sure that as we apply attention to this string, that that string resides in that little slot. It'll just make tuning a lot easier and keep you from breaking the string. Now I want to identify something right here that's going to apply to um, all five of the strings that we're playing. This, this applies to mandolin and to banjo as well. But we want our string to always be wound a certain direction around our tuning posts, okay? Um, 
simply for the fact that whenever you're tuning as you're playing, everything is always constant. If I pick up your banjo and the fifth string's a little flat, I know which way I have to turn it without even looking at it. Okay, so it's, it's almost more of a, a courtesy thing and uh, it's just the right way to do things. So I'm gonna tell you how to do that now. The easy thing to remember is that your string always needs to trail from the inside of the tuning post back down the finger, the fretboard. You see what I'm saying? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this um, string and I'm gonna hold just enough slack here to where I can manually wrap this string around this tuning post one time clockwise. Okay, and watch how I do that here. Right, just enough slack where I can get it around one time. Did you see that? Now that string is wrapped one time around that tuning post, and I'm going to place it in that little plastic slot that I talked about earlier and keep a little tension on it. An easy way to do that is to just with your right hand, we're going to kind of grab the string with our three fingers while holding a finger down here and keeping tension on it. Then I'm going to turn my tuning peg to the left, being careful that our string winds beneath the loop that we made earlier, okay? Sometimes we can take the end of the string and just kind of bend it straight up so as we wind, we want our string to be winding underneath each progressive loop, okay? I'll show you a little close-up of that here in a little while. It's hard to see it on this fifth string. But we're going to go ahead and wind it up and keep it in this little plastic slot I was talking about. Make sure it remains in your bridge slot down here. And we're going to take it up to about the right pitch. Now, a way that we can... Um, tell that is that our other four strings, though the tuning has been affected slightly by taking the tension off uh, whenever we change this string, they're still fairly close. So we can kind of just tune it back up with the banjo. And then after we get all five strings, we're going to stretch them and, and retune all together. Now the last thing we want to do is clip the end of this string. Just be real careful whenever you're clipping that uh, you don't accidentally clip the, uh, the new string. You only want to clip this edge. That goes without saying, I know, but I've done it. Joe's, the G string may have a little different setup here in the uh, in the tailpiece. This particular banjo has a little hole that the string actually has to run through. Okay, my advice is before you start changing the strings on a, on any new banjo, that you just look and and make a quick study on what is uh, how the old strings are on there. Okay, that way you can reproduce it. Um, Sometimes, you know, I've taken strings off of things with weird tail pieces and not paid attention how I took them off. And then I have to spend a little time just figuring out how they're threaded back through there. So that's what we want to do. With this particular one, I found that it's easier instead of putting the loop end on the actual hook on the end first, I take the, uh, the other end of the string and run it through the little hole and go ahead and pull it through this way, okay? Then once I've pulled it through, then I can take this loop end, place it around the loop for the G string there, and I'm back in business. I 
I wanted to just take a quick moment to really zoom in and explain what I'm talking about whenever we wind these, uh, these strings. It's very important to do it correctly because if we do it incorrectly, um, we could really experience some tuning issues and maybe worse. We might have a string come loose with this, okay? So the important thing is um, not to get too little of a string wrapped around this tuning post here because if you if you have too little string wrapped around it and you really put the pressure to it it there it has the ability to actually pull out and perhaps come undone okay but on the other hand we don't want to have too much not that that hurts us a whole lot but we want just enough um, to hold it but not so much that it's a big ball of string right here around the tuning post because essentially what that poses is a situation where we have a lot of string up there that needs to be stretched so over the life of the string, you've got all this wrapped up string up here that's going to keep stretching and keep stretching, even to a point where perhaps you don't notice it. But if you put too much string on here, you may notice that, man, my, my B string is always going flat or my D string is always going flat. Well, if you have too much string up here, that could be the reason why. Okay, so I'm going to show you what my um, method is to be able to judge exactly how much string needs to go up here. So I've replaced all the strings except this high D string here, our first string. So I'm gonna unloose it. And once again, like I mentioned before, we wanna to try to leave the hole in this tuning post here. We wanna to try to leave it perpendicular with our fingerboard so that as we look down the fingerboard, we can see through this hole. This just makes it a little easier when we put our string on in a little while to run the end through that hole. Okay, I'm going to take my last string here. It's in a size 11 GHS string. I'm going to place this loop end down around the hook on the tail piece. And then I'm going to bring this other end up and run it through this hole. This is what I'm talking about having your holes lined up. It's a lot easier for me to do it this way than to have to come around and search for a different way to put the string in, okay? We're going to run it right through, grab it, and go ahead and pull our slack out, okay? So I'm not pulling really tight, but I've pulled all my slack out, and I want to just kind of look at it, make sure that I've got my slots lined up correctly. Now, this is the trick. We want to be able to grab just enough slack here, be able to pull out just enough slack to where I can get this string wrapped around the tuning post at least once, really um, only once, um, using just our hand strength, okay? If we get it to where I could take this and wrap it around twice before I run out of slack, that means that we've got, we're gonna have too much string on this tuning post by the time I come down here and tune it up to, uh, to pitch. If I got it to where I can't quite get it around the tuning post with just my hand, that could potentially mean that we don't have enough string on this tuning post and you could experience some slippage uh, down the road, okay? And that just takes a little practice to be able to judge how much that's, um, how much that entails, okay? Now the other thing I want to touch on right quick is that we want our strings always running to the inside of the tuning post down back over the fingerboard, okay? So that means that these two over here, the strings are running uh, counterclockwise, right? Because they're coming off of that and running down here. However, our strings on the left side here, our D and G strings, they are running clockwise and coming off. And that just keeps all of our tuning um, just very um, uh, unilateral there, okay? We always turn each of the tuning pegs the same direction to sharpen the pitch or the same direction to flatten the pitch, okay? So I'm gonna take just enough here to where I can get it over that tuning post just one time. And there it is almost, there we go. Now after we do that, as I mentioned before, my little trick is to kind of hold it down with my finger while I'm pulling up with my other three fingers. And we're gonna press this string down, okay? And we're gonna take this tail and we're gonna bend, kind of just pull it up, bend it up so that it stays out of our way. Now, as we start tightening this tuning peg, remembering to, for this string to be running counterclockwise on this tuner, we want it running to the inside of the peg head. As we do that, I'm going to take my finger and press down so that the loops that we're making here run underneath the loop that I've already made, okay? I want you to see that. 
stuff with this banjo. But can you see how the loop that I'm, um, the latest loop that we're making runs underneath the other loops? Okay. We want to keep kind of pressing down. We don't want a lot of space though in between those loops. Okay. It's kind of like coiling a, a lariat rope. You know, um, we, we want real tight coils so that there's not any slipping going on. At the same time, we want it running underneath, okay? Now at this point, as it starts getting tight, I'm gonna make sure that it's in the proper slot here on the nut, as well as look down at the bridge and make sure that we're running the proper slot there. Then I'm just gonna kind of strum it as I tighten it until I get it to the proper pitch or close to it, okay? And we'll take our string cutters and we want to cut as close as we can, okay? You can leave a little bit of a tail on there, but just remember the longer the tail, uh, the, the more chance you're going to have of getting stabbed. I've gotten stabbed quite a few times. So I'm going to get pretty close, clip it off just like that, the scar to the end, and folks, that's all four strings. I want you to study how these strings come off the tuning post there. And notice, as I said before, that our two here are running clockwise and coming off to the inside and our two down here are running counterclockwise and coming off to the inside. Our strings always come off to the inside even on this fifth peg. You see how it does there. All right, now that we've got all of our strings on the banjo, it still should be in somewhat relative tune, being that that we tuned each string back up back in tune with the other strings after we changed it. Now, if the banjo was really out of tune to begin with, uh, then we may not be that close. But as long as you have quite a bit of tension on the strings, as long as we're somewhat close to what our uh, correct pitch is, then we're able to stretch these strings. And this is, a, this is something that I do on banjo and I also do on guitar. I've explained it in my uh, stringing guitar video. But what we're going to do is just grab these strings and squeeze the strings together and really just try to get all the stretching out of the string that it's going to do. So that as we're playing, uh, we don't experience a lot of uh, slippage and a lot of stretching. Um, whenever I was playing for different artists here in Nashville, um, we would change our strings or um, we would have guitar techs that would change our strings each day. And so you didn't have time uh, to to go out and play a show and 30 minutes into the show, your instruments already slipped out of tune. So these guitar techs would take the, the strings and stretch them uh, to their fullest capacity before they handed them to you so that you knew that you could go out on stage and depend on that tuning, um, at least until something else happened that knocked you out of tune. But at least the, the strings weren't gonna stretch on you, okay? So what I like to do with this banjo is we have all of our strings on. I like to just simply grab our uh, D string, the first string here, and we're just going to grab the low D string, the fourth string, and I'm going to grab it at two points here, right around the 12th or 15th fret, okay? And I'm just going to squeeze them together, okay? Just squeeze them together to where it looks like one string right in the middle. Then I'm going to take it and just kind of move it back and forth. Now with a banjo, you can't quite be as aggressive as you could on guitar, simply because the bridge will still move on you. So if I really started breaking these strings back and forth, we could potentially move that bridge out of position, which we don't want to do, okay? So we'll get all four of these, and I just kind of give it a shake back and forth, and I also, then I'll move to my B string, the second string, and reach up and grab the fifth string, the uh, high G string, and do the same thing. Just kind of stretch it. Then I'll take each individual string, grab the D string here, and just kind of pull up on it a little bit, and just shake it back and forth. Then we're going to move along to our B string, our G string, D string and then the high G string. Okay. Now we can tell it's out of tune now. That's good. I'm getting it out of there. And the last thing that I'll do is kind of a massage type move. I'm going to take my thumbs, place it on the string, and just press it towards the end of the neck there. Okay. So I'm doing that with my fifth string. Now the fifth string has the most tension on it. So you'd probably be able to move it the least, okay? We don't want to break the string, but we do want to be pretty firm with it. It's okay, it can, it can take it. If you do what I do here and your strings break, you need to go buy some different kind of strings because um, they're no good. I'm gonna move on to this D string. I'm gonna zoom in for you here so you can kind of see what, what's going on. I'm gonna move on to this D string, grab it with my thumbs and just really kind of push it out, push it out. Get to the G string. Do the same thing. I'm pushing it almost to the end of the fingerboard there. 
Okay, now I'm gonna grab my B string since I would run out of room pushing it over the front of the fingerboard. I'm gonna grab it with my fingers and just kind of pull it back. I'm gonna pull it back almost all the way to that D string and just do it several times like that. Okay, we're really stretching it out. Then grab our first string, D string, and do the same thing. Okay? Now, we have stretched these strings pretty well. It's even out of tune a little bit more. Now, I just want to touch on tuning really quick. This is not a banjo tuning video. Um, I will do that before too long. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole nother half hour that we'll need to address that. But um, I do want to point out a cool little tuner that I do have on my iPhone. Um, I don't endorse this product, so to speak. I mean, I do endorse it because it's, um, it's very useful and I think it's worth the money. However, I'm not connected to this product in any way. But it's called the Guitar Toolkit. I wanted to point this out to you. I did this in my, um, in my guitar video as well. But I want you to look at the icon there in the bottom right, the little red pick that's on fire there. Okay, it has an incredible tuner on it, okay? Not only does it have a tuner, but it also has a, a metronome with a tempo tap pad, as well as a chords, um, a virtual neck that you can strum. So this, I use this several times a day. It's 10 bucks in the app store. I think it's probably available for your Sprint phones as well as Verizon phones. Um, but it is the best tuning app that I've found. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up about that. Um, I have a lot of friends with a lot of different tuning apps and everybody ends up getting this one. All right. So there you go. Well, folks, this was a quick tutorial on uh, changing your strings, banjo strings. If you have any questions, just email me, ben at banjobenclark.com. Thank you for stopping by the website, www.banjobenclark.com. I'm going to be adding more videos every week. Uh, if you have ideas for a particular video, shoot me an email, okay? I'm here to help you learn, um, and the very basics of your learning are how to take care of your instrument, how to perform that maintenance, which is what we've learned here today. Thank you very much. Love y'all. God bless. Adios.